Alright, welcome back to Math 1720. We are starting Chapter 7 now. Uh, so we're going to talk about oblique triangles and the law of sines congruency, okay? So oblique triangles, remember we're talking about triangles that have, you know, different aspects to them and the, they're non-right triangles, right? So we want to, we can't use the normal uh, Sokotoa stuff, alright? So we're going to use the law of sines to do our calculations here, okay? So we have to talk about uh, different congru congruency axioms. So this is a little bit of a review of what you should have learned in geometry. Uh, we're talking about side angle side. All right, so we're comparing two triangles here. If two sides um, and the included angle of one triangle are equal, respectively, the two sides and the included angle of a second triangle are going to be uh, congruent as well. All right, so that's our side angle side. You guys remember them as theorems uh, where you did some proofs in geometry. We also have another one, angle side angle. If two angles and the included side of one triangle are equal, respectively to two angles, and the included side of a second triangle, then the angles are congruent. So uh, remember when it says included, so side angle side, the angle has to be between the two sides. And when we go angle side angle, okay, that side has to be between the two specified angles. So it has to fit this, okay? If we have a side 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 axiom, all right, if three sides of one triangle are equal respectively to three sides of a second triangle, then we can call the triangles, right, congruent. All right, so we're going to talk about oblique triangles, and as I said before, they're triangles that are not a right triangle. So we need to be able to solve them um, when we don't have just right triangles that we can use in, in our Sokotoa that we've been doing all semester long. So we're going to use a law of sines, law of cosines to work our way through this. We're going to start with the law of sines, though, all right? So, uh, what does this really mean to be oblique though, right? It's not a right triangle. It says, and the measure of the three sides and the three angles of the triangle can be found if at least one side and any other two measures are known. So that's what we really need to understand, okay? So I'm gonna have you kind of go through the different cases here um, that we need to solve for oblique triangles so you can kind of pause this. Uh, they're pretty self-explanatory when we're talking about side, angle, angle, uh, side, side, angle, side, angle, side. And, and how it lays out, and these should all be just review uh, from geometry. Here's the one that we need to know though, right? If we know three angles of a triangle, we cannot find unique side lengths since angle, angle, angle assures us only similarity, not congruency. Remember, triangles can be similar, right? The ratios might be different. So we can have a 45, 45, 90 triangle for say, but it might be a one, one square root of two, or it might be a 10, 10, 10 square root of two. All right, so they're not, congruent, they're just similar. So that's kind of the difference um, between uh, congruency and similarity. All right, I'm not gonna give you the derivation for law of sines. Uh, you can flip, flip through in the PowerPoints if you want, but here is the law of sines, and we can write this a couple different ways. In any triangle ABC with side lengths A, B, and C, all right, remember the lowercase letter is referring to the side length and the uppercase letter is referring to the angle. So little a will always be across from big A, little b will always be across from big B, and little c will always be across from big C. Now you could write these the alternative way and say sine of a over little a equals sine of b over little b equals sine of c over little c. So if you're solving for an angle, I would use it where the angles are on top. If you're solving for a side length, I would use it as it's written right here. Or for us to solve these, okay, you need to have at least three out of the four pieces. So what you're gonna do is, you're not gonna use all six of these at once. You're gonna choose four that apply to the problem that you have. So you might have little a and big A, and big B, and you might be finding little b. Or you might have little a and big A, and little c, and you need to solve for big C. Okay, so you can use any combination. You can use the a's with the b's, the a's with the c's, or the B's with the C's, okay? So any one of those combination, you have to have three out of the four pieces, all right, to adequately use these. So let's work through some examples here. We have a triangle, and I always recommend that you guys draw these triangles out. All right, draw them as you see them. It makes you kind of easy. It makes it easier to step through, okay? So we're gonna apply the, the side angle angle law here, all right? So we have side angle angle. But if you notice, little a is across from big A, little b is across from big b and little c is across from big c 
they always need to be drawn out that way. It doesn't really necessarily matter how you draw the triangle, you gotta get it approximately you know, with the angles. So we have an 81.8 .8 degree angle and a 32 degree angle. All right, and then we have our little A. So this does fit side, angle, angle, because we have one side and then we have two adjacent angles next to each other. So we can solve this by using the law of sines. You don't need to use all three parts, like I said before. So we're gonna apply the law of sines as such. Okay, we're solving the triangle for all the missing pieces here. You should be able to find the missing angle, right? There are 180 degrees in a triangle. So we should take 180 minus 81.8 minus 32, and that'll give you what angle C is. All right, but we're gonna need to use law of sines to find the missing side units. We cannot use the Pythagorean theorem because this is not a right triangle. So we're gonna use the law of sines that involves the A's and the B's, because that's what we have. All right, we have big A, we have little a, and we have big B, so that'll help us find the little b, okay? Make sure when you're doing these, your calculator is in degree mode, all right? Because we are doing our calculations in degrees. So substitute in your values, and then you're gonna solve for little b. So in order to do that, we have to multiply both signs by sine of 81.8. And also, guys, when you're using your calculators, I know I don't have it shown here, please put the argument or the angle in parentheses all the time or you're going to get some calculator errors. So really make sure that you work through these examples on your calculator so that you know that you're plugging things in correctly. All right, so once we multiply both sides by 81.8, all right, then we will just substitute into our calculator. We have 42.9 times the sine of 81.8. Make sure you put that whole thing in the numerator and that the 81.8 is in its own set of parentheses. Divided by sine of 32. Make sure the 32 is in parentheses. And when you do that, you're approximately going to get the side length of 80.1 centimeters. All right, so these are relatively easy. Uh, just substituting in, making sure you're doing it right. So my one word of advice on this example is make sure that you're putting your numbers in the calculator and getting the numbers that I have here on the screen for you to use. All right, and then I already talked about how we do that, find the missing uh, angle because all the angles in a triangle need to add up to 180 degrees. So we know that the missing piece is 66.2 degrees. Now that we know what angle C is, we can find the missing side length for angle C. Because remember this said solve the triangle, so we've got to find all the missing parts. Okay, but we needed angle C to solve. Now always use the trig that you're given. Even though we found the part B, the little b, in the previous part, don't use that because if you did make a mistake on that, that means that you're going to also make a mistake on C. All right, so since we were given little a and big A, use what was given. So we're gonna to choose to use a over sine a equals c over sine c. And now we know what big C is, it's 66.2. So once again, we solve for c the same way we solved for b earlier, okay? We have to multiply both sides by sine of 66.2. And when we do that, we end up with this piece. Once again, make sure that you're putting it in your calculator correctly. In the numerator, put it all in parentheses. You're going to take 42.9 times sine of 66.2, and then divide that by sine of 32. Another way to avoid it is if you go 42.9 times sine of 66.2, hit enter on your calculator, and then hit divide by sine of 32. That should help with any errors or issues that you have uh, with order of operations in your calculator. All right, when you do that, you should get 74.1. So make sure that you're getting that value on your calculator. Uh, if not, shoot me an email, let me know if you have questions uh, on that piece or if you're not understanding how to put it into your calculator, okay? So like I just said before, tip, all right, make sure that you're using the given values. So like in the last problem I said, use what was given for A to solve for C. All right, more realistic problem. Now these don't always come with a picture on your assignments. You need to be able to kind of draw these uh, really helps if you can do that. All right, so Kurt Daniels wishes, wishes to measure the distance across the Gasconde River. All right, he determines that C is 112.9 degrees. All right, so that's, a, that's our uh, obtuse angle sitting right there. And we have little, our big A is also 31.1, and our little B is 347.6. 
So even if you don't draw the river in the pretty picture, you need to draw the triangle, all right? And make sure that little a is across from big A, little b is across from big A, or big B, sorry, and little c is across from big C. Now, we have little b, we need to find little a, but we're not given what big B is. So we have to use our knowledge of what big A and big C are, what those two angles are. So we're gonna have to do 180 minus those two angles to find out what angle B is, okay? And we find out when we calculate that, it's 36 degrees. And now that we know that big B is 36 degrees, we can use little b and either A or C to find the missing piece. So we can choose A over sine A equal B over sine B, or we could have chosen uh, the other one using C. All right, so substitute in what we know. We know uh, little b, we know sine, or we know uh, big A, and we know big B now. So we're gonna multiply both sides by sine of 31.0. So A is gonna be 347.6 times sine of 31.10 and then we're gonna divide by sine of 36. Once again, make sure that your numerator is in parentheses, the arguments in parentheses uh, when you do that. Make sure, like I said, when you're going through the lecture here, make sure you have your calculator by you, make sure you're in degree mode, and make sure that you're getting the same values that are showing up on the screen here for your calculations, okay? So, approximately the distance across the river is about 305.5. You know, and this is this is very realistic, all right? Surveyors do this all, all the time uh, when they want to calculate, you know, how they're going to lay things out for the civil engineers when they put up a building or when they completely develop, uh, you know, uh, where a bunch of homes are going to go or a golf course or things like that. They, all, they do these kind of things, okay? All right, let's take another one here. We got two ranger stations on an east-west line are 110 miles apart. So you need to understand that you're drawing that east-west line. So when you draw it on your paper, make one A, one B, and put 110 between them and make them, you know, we should have a horizontal line, okay? It says a forest fire is located on a bearing of north 42 degrees east. So we're bringing stuff back from chapter three, okay? When we get in here, north, all right, 42 degrees east. So that means that we always start facing north and we're gonna fall 42 degrees to the right because that's east. So make sure looking at this drawing because all the drawings that, you're not gonna get a lot of drawings on your homework assignments, you're gonna have to draw them and you need to remember how we do bearings, okay? And then we have another fire station that has a, 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 sees the fire on a bearing of north 15 degrees east. Okay, that's from station B. It says to the nearest 10 miles, how far is the fire station from the western station? Well, that's station A. You gotta remember we're treating this just like a map with north, south, east, and west. All right, so we wanna find how far, how far the fire is from the station. You should ask yourself, okay, on this triangle that's drawn here, is that little a, little b, or little c? Obviously, it's little b, okay? But we have to use, we cannot use 42 and 15 directly as we see here. All right, we have to be able to interpret what the angles are in question. So what you need to know is, since we're using bearings, bearings are 90 degree angles, okay? So if we look at angle A, angle A is gonna be 90 minus 42, okay? So 90 minus 42, so that should be 48 degrees, right? Then if we look at angle B, it should be 90 plus 15. So that one should be 105. All right, so then we have 180 minus 48 minus 105. All right, that'll give us what angle C is as well. So you can relatively see how we get the different parts and pieces. You just gotta be careful how you use them. Okay, so we found angle BAC and angle ABC. Remember the middle letter when we write it out that way is the angle, so it says M with the angle sine BAC. It means the measure of angle BAC, okay? So there's how we're able to get those. I just kind of walked you through it. All right, and then we can, once we know all those, we know that angle C is 27 because it's 180 minus 105 minus 48. Hmm. By the law of sines to find B. So, you know, you can still, we know certain values. 
and we have to choose the right one. You could use sign, the one with sine of C or the one with sine of A, okay? But we don't, we, it just kind of depends on what we want to find here, okay? And we know little c is 110, so that's why we have to pick B over sine B equals C over sine C. You can write out the other one with A, but you don't have enough information. You only have the angles. You have to include the one that has the side that's given to you. The side that's given to you is little c, which is 110 miles. All right, so when we do this calculation, now we substitute in the values. So little b is what we are looking for. So we're going to have b over sine of 105 equals 110 over sine of 27. Now we're going to multiply both sides by sine of 105. All right, and when we get that, once again, just make sure you're doing it right in your calculator. Okay. And sometimes your calculator, you know, on your um, assignments can ask you to give, you know, a couple significant digits, that's fine. They'll be close, they shouldn't be anything arbitrarily far away where you're going to be guessing, okay? So approximately 230 miles away, okay? All right, so let's find area of triangles now. So, side angle side. These are different area equations you need to write down all three of these. These are new to you, right? Remember the area of the triangle is one half base times height. But we're going to do this a little bit differently because we're going to be applying what we learned with law of sines. So you need to write down these three area equations or area formulas, I guess we could call them. All right. So the funky looking A on the left hand side of everything, that's what's representing area. So that you notice a way to learn these is they all have a one half and notice like the first one is little b little c sine of a the next one is little a little b sine of c the last one is little a little c sine of b so notice whatever two side links that you're using you use the opposite ones angle so you're still including an a b and a c type scenario into here okay so if the included angle is 90 degrees this is where it's truly developed from because what is sine of 91? So if we look back at all these, right? Sine of 90 degrees is one. So that's why a very familiar formula for you guys is area equals one half base times height. Okay, that's another way it comes from. And where else have we learned that? Using triangles and square or rectangles and drawing triangles inside of rectangles, right? Because we know a triangle is half of a square or half of a rectangle and that 90 is really in there but it comes in the form of sine of 90 so that's why the general area of triangles one half base times height but not for our triangles all right we're going to use uh, what's given for us all right let's take a look at this example we want to find the area of triangle ABC given two side lengths we're given little a is 34 little c is 42 and B is 55 degrees, 10 minutes. So this is where you need to remember to use your DMS button on your calculator under apps, okay? And then you're, if you need help uh, going through there, uh, let me know and I'll show you in class. All right, but we wanna find the area of the triangle. So we know we have one half A, C, sine of B. We have B, we have little a, we have little c, so we can substitute in. So it's gonna be one half times 34 times 42 times sine of 55 degrees 10 minutes. Make sure that you're substituting that into your calculator correctly. You should get approximately 586 square feet. All right, these aren't that hard, relatively easy. Let's do another triangle real quick. Find the area of triangle ABC. All right, now we gotta do a little bit more work. Okay, because we only have what? Little b, and we need to have one of the others. We need to have little a, we need to have little c. All right. Now, what you really need to think about, all right, is, you know, what else do I need to apply here? Well, I might have to apply the law of sines first to find one of the other side lengths first. Then I can apply the area formula. So this might be a two step problem when you see these. Always pay attention to what you've been given versus what you're looking for. So that's how you're going to have to distinguish if I got a multi-step problem here that I got to work through, okay? So let's find little a or little c. So we let's find big B because we're going to need big B to find one of those, all right? So 180 minus 24 
degrees 40 minutes minus 52 degrees 40 minutes will give us 102 degrees 40 minutes. So that's what big B is. All right. So we're just applying law of sines. So this is the same as like the first uh, three examples, applying the law of sines here to find one of the sides we need to calculate the area. So remember, this is a two-step problem. We're going to find one of the side lengths first. And then once we have that side length, we can find the area of the triangle. So A over sine A equals B over sine B. All right, and since we're looking for side lengths, we're going to do A over sine A, B over sine B instead of flipping them and looking for angles. All right, so this should be relatively easy for us to do now. Substituting in, and we calculate that little a is 11.7. Now we can use the area formula. We have two side lengths, all right, and we have an angle that goes with them. So we're going to use this area formula, one half a, b, sine of c, because now we have little a, we have little b, and we have c. So substitute in those values, and we end up getting the area as 127 centimeters square. Um, I'm, you notice I might be rushing through the, the substitution piece easy, you know, relatively quick. You guys should be able to do that, all right? We're just substituting in given values, putting them in your calculator, and making sure that you're getting the right answers out. Uh, one thing to check yourself on, please make sure that your calculator is in degrees mode uh, when you're doing this, or you're going to get some really funky answers. finding some missing side lengths, all right, or, you know, finding the area. Now, one thing I didn't cover thoroughly in here is what if we have to find a missing angle, all right? So let's do law of sines with the, uh, the capitals, right, or the angles on top. Then what do you need to do? Because the part I didn't, uh, I do one on the board in class, but I'm not going to do one here. I want you to figure it out, okay? Remember, uh, if we're looking for an angle, that you're going to have to do sine inverse of whatever you get to actually get the theta. So just kind of checking to see who actually watches the lectures uh, and gets that piece. All right, you have to do sine inverse of whatever the ratio is that you get, or the angles, okay, or whatever that decimal is to find theta. Okay, like I said, we didn't do one of these. I want you to maybe watch the class live to get it or because I'm going to do one in class where we might have to you know find the angle instead okay all right guys that's it for uh, chapter 7 section 1 if you have any questions like usual email me or uh, go ahead and have ready and ask in class